Hello, Mark on staff. As someone who told me back in March of 2020 that we'd still be doing virtual all staff meetings two years later. I would have thought that was crazy, but here we are. So, so I've got a couple of things I want to share with you. First of all, is we got the voice of the employee. This is actually our sixth voice of the employee. So we've been doing this for five years, five completed years. So this is our sixth VOE. And if you go to the, the connections that was uh, that was just put out on February 10th, you'll see the many things that we really been drawn from the VOE from you over these past. Uh, five years. So we thank you very much for, and we just really appreciate you taking the time to do the VOE. And another, this year, there's a number of different spots for you to actually put in remarks, and those are incredibly helpful to us. And I know it kind of makes it a little slower going through it, but we really would appreciate you taking the time to give us some of your thoughts in those different spaces where you can do those remarks. And we appreciate that very much. You have till February 27th to complete that. So I hope that you'll take the time to do that. It just, it doesn't take too long. It probably takes at least 10 minutes, 10, 12 minutes, but we hope that you'll take the time to do that. COVID, so we are still in the midst of it. Now the governor on uh, Wednesday on the 9th of February talked about the, uh, by the end of the month that we're going to be relaxing some of the rules for mask wearing. Nothing has changed for us. So we are under IDPH, and so as far as mask wearing and all the different regulations we're under, they continue. But we are seeing, uh, I mean, obviously the number of infections is drastically dropping from what we had originally. In fact, since March 2020, 49 of our residents have contracted COVID. And, uh, but that was, half of those were in the month of January. Actually, from January 1st to January 18th. So a tremendous number of our residents with the Omicron virus, was, which was very transmittable. And then uh, 218 of our staff have uh, contracted it over the last two years. And over 50% of them were from December 1st to March to January 18th. So in a month and a half, over half of our staff. And so fortunately, we're back. It was mild. Uh, for the most part, and uh, we're, we're back. And we, we are seeing, I think, the waning days of, uh, of, of the COVID virus. Uh, now, what that's going to mean for us as far as future regulations, we hope they're going to start relaxing us, but it's, it's really too soon to tell. But at least it seems like we're getting to a place where we'll get uh, a few less regulations as far as the number of things that we have to do as staff and taking care of our residents as well as our students. So, and just, just you know, thank you for the way you've, you know, I know we're, uh, we've had a lot of open staff positions and uh, you've been picking up and you've really been, been doing a Herculean effort to, uh, to care for those who are placed in our charge. So thank you for uh, everyone and all that you're doing uh, to just uh, continue to keep the train running on time. And uh, we appreciate it very much. So I want to talk to you a little about the M2030 plan, things that are going on with that. So five years ago, back in 2017, we developed a new vision statement. A happy, safe, purpose-filled life for every individual with intellectual and developmental disabilities. So really from that, we have really, now this is kind of this first step that we're taking in this 10-year plan. It's a $35 million 10-year plan that's about, it's not just about capital expansion, but it's also about expanding our programs, expanding the number of people. It says serving the underserved, really serving those who are not currently receiving services. So kind of starting off the, the plan, we've got three capital projects that will be kicking off actually in April. Two on the Geneva campus, and then one just down the street from the Wasman Center in Elgin. So the two capital projects in Geneva, one is a long-awaited locker room, a real locker room attached to our warm water therapy pool, which is going to help us, allow us to double the number of residents who are actually served by that program and students. And so it'll give a real locker room for our residents, uh, for the staff, uh, and for volunteers. And we're just really excited about that. The other project that's going to be, that's going to be kicking off 
is a maintenance building. I would say a new maintenance building, but it's really our first maintenance building, other than the one we have at the Mark and Wasman Center. So this one's going to have really a, a great space. It's got three bays. It's got a big work area. It's going to have some areas for our, our long and hardworking maintenance staff to be able to do some of the things that they need to do to, in order to support our facilities and the, and the growing fleet of vehicles that we have. So both those projects will break ground in, in April, and then they should be completed around the end of October. The third project is, uh, I'm happy to name, is the, is the Nathan Education Center. It's uh, named after uh, uh, Nathan, who was uh, served by Markland for over 20 years at the Markland Phillips Center. So this Nathan Education Center is gonna actually combine, uh, it's gonna add five classrooms for the Markland Day School on one side, and on the other side is gonna be our first offsite uh, community day service. And it's gonna be called this new bridge builder program. And it's really gonna be for adults on the autism spectrum who are not currently being served by, by other providers. And so this is a whole new program that we're gonna be going into. They'll have some nice shared space uh, that they're gonna be able to benefit from. But this is a uh, facility, it's just three tenths of a mile, about uh, three tenths of a mile west on Summit Street from the Markman Wasman Center. And very excited about that getting started. So all three of those are gonna get started. And in addition to that, we're also doing, uh, we're working with an architect out of, uh, actually out of Cleveland, who is uh, helping us go through a process at both the Markham Phillips Center and the Markham Wasman Center on some expansions and uh, updates that we can do to both of those facilities. So that's something that we're also looking into. And that's also going to expand our, the number of our program space as well as the people that we're able to serve. And so those are so those are all some of the preliminary things that are going on. Got it. There's a lot more that's going on with Markman 2030, but those are kind of the beginning stages of that uh, decade long plan. Then I want to just say, so salary adjustments. So I, I hope you're looking at the connections. So if you go, you go to our ADP site and, and get past connections. So just like you can look at, uh, when I talked about some of the things that we have gained from the voice of the employee from the connections today on February 10th. If you missed it, you can go back to the ADP site and see that one. From the February 3rd connections, there's a, a terrific piece in there about the salary adjustments that we're doing for all of our hourly staff. And so I think you can go through that. It may not answer all the questions. If you've got other questions, you certainly can contact me, contact administrators, you can contact the director of education. So it's about our direct care staff, our paras, and our RBT. So there's a lot going on with, in all those areas. So please look at that flyer. And if you have any questions, obviously you can reach out to me or you can reach out to your supervisor or administrators or director of education. So, so that's really um, all I have. As always, uh, if you have um, any comments, I hope you're using the suggestion box. So if you got things, there are a lot of great questions in the, uh, the February 10th connections. Uh, we hope you like the answers too. But again, if there's other questions, we hope that you're, you're utilizing that. We really do appreciate the insights you give us with the questions that you ask. And we do our best to answer it as fully as we possibly can. So thank you for, uh, for doing those things. So again, I cannot thank you enough. I'm so proud of the Markland staff and how you have handled the, the pandemic over these last two years. And we're not out of it yet, but we will be. Things are gonna change as we move forward and as we get into the spring and summer months, it's, it's looking like it's gonna be a lot different. It looks like summer games are gonna be in June again, whether or not we're gonna be able to have parents and guardians, we don't know. Uh, volunteers, we're not sure if we're going to be able to use, have them or not, but we will have summer games back to June at all three of our sites. So excited about things starting to get back to some type of normal. So now, uh, now Wendy is going to talk to us about HIPAA. <laughs> 
Hi, everyone. Uh, it's that time of the year again, our uh, annual mandatory HIPAA in-service. So I'm going to do a brief overview today in the all staff, but um, so that you know, there will be a policy uh, and in-service that comes through ADP, and it will be uh, uploaded on Wednesday the 18th, or excuse me, the 16th. So keep an eye out. You should receive an email uh, in your Markland email about that in-service, and you'll need to go into your ADP account read and then acknowledge that in service um, as part of this annual training. Uh, so let me get my screen going and I'll do a brief overview of HIPAA. Okay. All right, so what is HIPAA? Uh, HIPAA is basically um, standards that regulate how we can use or disclose people's protected health information. Um, which is individually identifiable information um, that's transmitted by electronic media or also any other form of media. So basically anything about somebody's health that can be identified or traced back to them. So as a Markland employee, you are required um, by the law and by our policy to follow HIPAA, um, which is why it's important that everyone is familiar with the policy and understands it. So hence the uh, annual in-servicing on this. Okay, so let me talk a little bit more about what protected health information is. So as I said, it's identifiable information um, about someone's physical or mental health or condition, um, about delivery of healthcare to an individual or payment related to healthcare for an individual. So what can make it identifiable, right? Uh, lots of things, there are tons of identifiers, which is what makes HIPAA kind of tricky. Um, I have some listed here. This is not the end all be all of the list, but if you had, for example, uh, somebody's diagnosis connected to their social security number, uh, that would be identifiable protected information and we would need to keep it confidential under HIPAA law. Uh, the sneaky thing about you know, the government is that they also like to throw in there that any other characteristic that could uniquely identify the individual counts as an identifier. So if they go back and look at something and they decide, oh, that actually can identify them even though it wasn't on our list, uh, then it still could count as a HIPAA violation. So we all need to be very careful. Uh, so what do we do, right? We do healthcare at Markland. We need to share information. We need to protect information. Uh, so there's this balance between privacy and services. So when you think about who should have access to health information, I want you to think about two things, need to know and minimum necessary. So does this person need to know this information to do their job, to provide the services that they are providing to Markland? That's one. And then two, what's the least amount of health information that I can share with this person to allow them to do the job? So if you kind of stick with those two things, um, it really boils HIPAA down to kind of the basics. Do they need to know it? What's the least amount of information? Um, and this also counts not just with us um, communicating with people outside of Markland, but also other Markland staff. So uh, if you are talking to someone um, who is in uh, finance or development, you don't necessarily need to be sharing, you know, a, a client's temperature or their diagnosis, right? So even within Markland, we need to be careful and only share the information that people need to do about our residents, our clients, our students, um, so that they can do their job successfully. So um, uh, HIPAA violations, um, failure to follow HIPAA uh, can result in developmental action or even termination or separation from Markland. Um, we obviously try to avoid that. We do training in servicing so that you guys are aware of uh, what the regulations and the policies are. Uh, you should be aware though that it can also result in individual fines and criminal prosecution. Um, now, generally they're gonna be uh, doing this if somebody has done something maliciously. Um, fines can start at $100 for minor offenses up to $50,000 per, per violation um, and potentially imprisonment for major violations. So um, just to protect yourself as well, it's important that you understand what HIPAA is and uh, how we can keep that information safe here at Markland. Okay, so how can we protect 
uh, health information. So this is this is not everything, but it's a few things to think about. Uh, use a strong password, right? Uh, we don't want people to be able to hack into our Markland accounts or our electronic medical records or anything that you do uh, for Markland. So anything that is connected to Markland should have a very strong password. Uh, make sure you log out of computers or lock the screen when you walk away so that someone can't just walk up and access whatever information is available there. Um, use only your Markland email for business communications. Okay? You should never be uh, emailing protected health information or Markland confidential information in a personal email. Uh, those email accounts do not have the same layers of protection that our Markland email does. Um, if you are accessing Markland information on your cell phone, you need to have a PIN or a password so that that cell phone is locked so that, you know, if someone just picks it up, they can't log into your email and access Markland information. And then if you have uh, seen, witnessed, or yourself accidentally had some sort of breach or what you think might be a violation of HIPAA, uh, you need to report it to me. So um, I'm the security officer for HIPAA, so you can email me or call me um, and let me know what the situation is, and then we'll move forward from there. But it is important that any potential incidents, whether you're sure or not, are reported to me because there's a lot of law around that um, as well to make sure as an organization uh, we are reporting any breaches to the government. What shouldn't you do? Don't share your password or your log on credentials, okay, to Markland accounts. That's just for you. Um, the only caveat there is if, you know, IT needs to get in to fix something, you may share it with them. Um, but you should never give a coworker or a family member your log on information. Uh, in your email, um, don't click on like weird links or images or attachments, especially in emails that you weren't expecting. Um, a lot of emails will come disguised as if they are from a Markland employee, if someone's trying to hack into our system. So if anything at all kind of makes you think, this doesn't seem quite right, um, you should go ahead and contact Tom um, or Ahud in IT, have them take a look at the email to see if they can determine if it's authentic or if it might be a, an attack upon Markland. Uh, make sure you're not leaving confidential documents around, right? So not everything is electronic. We still do a lot of paper stuff. Um, and those can't just be sitting out, you know, on printers. If you print something, go pick it up. Faxes, if you know fax is coming in, make sure you go get it. Um, leaving something face up on your desk and walking away, et cetera. Uh, the other thing is we can't confirm um, residents, clients, or students receive services at Markland unless we have specific consent from the guardian. So that can sometimes be a tricky one if someone just calls up and asks, so oh, is, um, is John there today? Uh, you can't say yes. Um, you have to kind of say, you know, we're not able to disclose that type of information. Uh, if you're ever uncomfortable with that, you can always pass those types of requests or phone calls uh, on to somebody else, the front desk, to your nurse manager, DON administrator, to me, and we'd be happy to talk to those individuals and explain why we can't share that type of information. Um, and then finally, obviously a huge uh, area of potential HIPAA violations is social media. Uh, so we've done a lot of work with our marketing department does a great job sharing information about Markland and um, our residents and pictures, et cetera. They have consents from the Guardian. Anything that gets posted by marketing is okay to be on social media. So anything you wanna share about Markland on social media really should be like forwarding, sharing those posts. You shouldn't take your own pictures or uh, write your own information about residents, clients or students that could have protected information in it and post it. So safest thing, um, none of your kind of like your pictures posts on Markland, but sharing what marketing uh, puts out there. Um, and then I talked a little bit about reporting breaches. So as a security officer, just to run through it quickly, somebody contacts me, lets me know that, you know, oh, I think, you know, I mailed this letter to who I thought was a guardian and I put the wrong address and now I don't know what to do. Um, you'd report it to me, I'd investigate. Was there really a breach? What was the risk of the breach? And is this something that we have to notify the state and the federal government of? And I'd work with you. Uh, you know, we'd talk about the situation. It'd be an investigation very similar to kind of our accident incident investigations. Um, and we'd get it all wrapped up and, and figure out where we need to go from there. 
So I have my information on there. Uh, again, Wendy Burke is my name and you can reach me um, on phone. You can reach me on email or if you wanna report through our compliance email, you can also do that as I receive notification from that. If you ever have any questions about HIPAA, please feel free to reach out. Um, and again, keep an eye out for that in-service and ADP. So this is just the verbal in-servicing. We need to have your electronic signature um, on the annual in-service as well. Uh, if you have any trouble getting into ADP, uh, give me a call or shoot me an email and I'll help you uh, figure out how to get in there and access that in-service. Thanks so much.